Welcome to Relationship Mastery, a podcast for those who want to learn how to master the art of creating happy, healthy, and loving relationships. Please join me, Dell A.D. Jones, and my co-host, Barry Selby, each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific for a lively and informative conversation on everything to do with relationships. Hello, everyone. Welcome for another another great conversation with the fabulous Barry here. So, <laughs> fabulous Dell as well. <laughs> Um, we were just talking before we came on air that um, we got a couple of requests to really go into the subject of projection more. We talked about it, I think it, we, we talked about it on the um, a show about obsessive relationships. And um, I think it's a really good one to really dive into because it, we, we all project. Everybody does it. Nobody mm-hmm. is is immune from this. And um, it's it's mostly unknown to ourselves that's the whole thing i mean we, we're not intentionally projecting but we do do it yeah. and to sort of clarify what projection is i thought i'd just read from the description given by the american psychological association so that we're going to use their description and it just sure. projection as the process by which one attributes one's own individual positive or negative characteristics onto another person mm-hmm. This is really important because we tend to sort of um, think of projection as just the negative. Right. But as we talked about in the show on obsessive relationships, that is a positive projection. Mm-hmm. So, um, and what I find really interesting is I think in the beginning of a, re- a romantic relationship, and in particular, we're talking about romantic relationship, but just for the moment, um, we tend to do the positive projection. We tend to not see the person we're meeting or going out on a date with. We've got all these um, ideas of who we want to meet, what they should be like, and we project that onto the person. And we don't really, really get to know the person for quite a few, I would say, I always say the first year. So that's going on in the beginning of a relationship. And it's usually at the end of a relationship where we do a lot of the negative projecting. Oh, they're this and they're that, and that couldn't possibly stay with them. So that's just my layman's observation, Barry. What do you think? I want to counterpoint on that slightly because I've also noticed sometimes in early relationships, and it's not just not just me. I think where sometimes we will, um, if we meet somebody we don't feel an immediate connection with, or don't or don't feel the most attraction to, we might start looking for the flaws. It's almost like some people are wired to look for the bad, look for the negative. Mm-hmm. And so let's look for the things that are flaws. And of course, as it's about projection, it's what we resonate with that we notice. So it's not so much we notice things that are, are quote, bad. We just go, well, I don't like that because we're not looking at the fact in the mirror that we're doing the same thing ourselves. So it can play up early stages of relationship and dating. And certainly in meeting new acquaintances or even business acquaintances where I have found in the past where sometimes I made assumptions about somebody, and I'm owning this one for myself, Nancy projected on them before I even got to know who they were and then was pleasantly surprised I was wrong and actually mm. found something pretty wonderful after that. And it's interesting, even in dating, where it was not the first reason I met the person, met the woman, where initially I was the woman was like not really liking them and, and basically was projecting all over her. And then after a while I get to know them, when I realized and finally got, hang on a second, that's my stuff, not theirs. I started recognizing just how amazing they actually were and was very attracted to them, surprisingly so. So... The, the projection piece for me has 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 a dance with it. So yes, initially the positive projection, generally speaking, is the way we do things because, of course, we want the fantasy, we want the whole possibility. So we look on the positive the whole way, whether it's true or not. And then this, then the reality settles in where the negative is not showing up. However, as we're talking this conversation, we can get beyond both. We can become more um, reality based, shall we say? You know, it's really interesting what you just said. I really like that because it's true. It's We can often use, you know, projection, I think, does come into play in our, you know, sorting. You know, when we sort people, oh, you're somebody that I um, could be with or I'm attracted to because there are elements in that person that we like about ourselves. So yeah. we are. But then we can often fill in the blanks and overlook other traits by then filling in also 
the positive projection, which are things that we don't acknowledge in ourselves, but would love to own. And they're there. We just don't know it. But we think, oh, they're so they're so successful. They're so bright. They're so intelligent. They're so artistic. They're so beautiful. And we've got the laundry list of, of things that we um, may not see in ourselves. And therefore, we value so much in another because we think, as we've often said, it's like these traits complete me. That right. we are in the other person and we're projecting onto them. But at the same time, you're right. We can also use that, our negative projections as a salter. It can mm -hmm. be sort of like, oh, well, I don't like this person because they're insecure. Now, it actually might be that you're insecure, but you you don't like that about yourself. You're not aware yeah. of your mm -hmm. insecurity. You see it as something as less than and something right. Never attribute to yourself, so you see it in another person. You're like, oh no, no, I cannot be with an insecure person, or with um, a jealous person. You know, oh no, this this person's jealous. Well, oh, I'm never jealous. <laughs> you know, and you could very well be very jealous, but you just won't own it. You won't say there are moments in my life where I find myself being less than I I would like to be. So yeah, you're right. It does play a part in in the sorting of who we're attracted to and who we're not attracted to so i think the more that we can be aware of the things in ourselves that we either deny exist we talked about this in the shadow um show a few a few probably a couple of months ago now mm -hmm. um, but if we can be aware of those things that we traits that we have in ourselves that we haven't fully embraced we can be far more aware of when we're projecting. I want to take this up a level for a moment, just to, for the people who are listening who may not understand this really deep, because to, to be clear, you and I both have a lot of experience in this work, having gone through with USM and other teachings about how projections work in a negative and positive way. But to illustrate this for the, for the lay person, so to speak, who's been watching this and going, what is all this about? Mm -hmm. To really illustrate this one is I would say every one of us has certain people we edify and idolize maybe some musician or celebrity or somebody who we look at and go, they're amazing and wonderful. Or we have somebody who maybe a politician, I'm using those two distinct quali uh, qualifications, who we actually put, put their judgments and, and, and negative thoughts on. If we look at each one in place, and particularly start with the politician or the negative one first, when we are willing to look at that person and go, you know, this person, they're a cheat, they're a liar, they don't do what I want, all these other things, where is that true in ourselves? That's the biggest question to ask is like, where is the stuff I'm judging inside me as well? Because that will be the key to open like, the freedom because what negative projection really is, is a, a list of judgments and blame and, and negative viewpoints that separate us from somebody, especially when it's somebody we don't like what they're doing. So by judging that and having that level of um, diminishment of who they are, we're actually separating ourselves that way. So that's one piece. That's the negative side, the positive side, which is really where we, it's what we talk about that right from the get-go, which I love that you said that in the description, is we have this tendency to underplay ourselves, especially when we look at somebody, and even the dating scene, but I'm using a celebrity, which is easy to go with, as they're so amazing, because they're so glamorous, they're so alive, they're so wonderful, they're so this, that, and the other, that we somehow separate ourselves from them because we couldn't carry that light. That light. We couldn't be that amazing. They couldn't be that you know, wonderful. But if we're willing to see it in somebody else, it's almost like if you can see it in them, it's got to be in us first. And this is one of the things I want to talk to really clearly is we can't see what's not in ourselves in a sense. So when we can say, oh, that person's amazing, are you willing to say, I'm amazing? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to just even entertain the idea that maybe you're actually better than you think you are because you're projecting possibly on somebody else? So we're using these tools as as homework for, for one of another word or word to use for it. So... If that helps get a framing in place, we can dive deeper into it. I want to make sure, though, for anybody's listening for the first time on this conversation, they go, oh, these are clearer examples, more, more blunt examples. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. And it, it's so true. And, yes, great examples, you know, especially differentiating the, um, the sort of celebrities as far as sort of actors, artists, you know, somebody that we, that we see in a more positive light. And, yes, mm -hmm politicians that some of us see in positive lights and others do not indeed <laughs> um but uh yeah it's um 
it's something that we are, as I said, it's something we're unaware of. If we were aware of it, then it would just be more of a calculated um, thing that we're doing. But it mm -hmm. always does amaze me how unconscious people can be in their projections. And whereas it can be so obvious to the rest of us, it's like, oh my God, you're projecting your own view of the world. It's like, I mean, one of the classic old ones is, when your spouse accuses you of cheating and you're absolutely no way in hell would you ever cheat and you're not cheating they often say well look a little deeper because if they're accusing you of cheating you know they may be doing that themselves it's yeah. just a way to sort of deflect the attention of their own behavior and we do see it in politics a lot we see certain politicians blaming other politicians for things that it's so evident that they are doing and we're just like hang on a minute we're all scratching our heads going but isn't that what you just did <laughs> <laughs> completely unaware right. and then what can happen is if somebody is so unaware of what they're projecting that they can actually be giving themselves away yep absolutely because they're, because they're so unaware of how 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 this is playing out in their lives yeah, and one of the things I thought just you said that was thinking that when you start watching other politicians do that, for example, using political um, arena as being the conversation piece, is to witness that, and rather than being the place like, oh, look at what they're doing, is it so clear? Use their example as a reflection for ourselves, even in, when it's that level. We say, hang on a second, I'm getting triggered by that. Then what's going on inside of me? And this is the thing: tends the, the negative projection tends to be a triggering energy. That basically we start to judge or react or jump up in some sort of upset if we were not invested or attached we wouldn't have that feeling so the clue is if we're getting upset where is what's happening out there reminded to ourselves of maybe something we're doing or ignoring or it may not be the same thing but the same level of energy we're still carrying inside so the good news about projection and i'm using some good news intentionally is it can give us opportunities to reflect and change how we are in the world so we get seen more clearly yeah yeah it's uh, we, we, I, i'm very aware too right now that we're probably tentatively you know trepid, stepping into sort of um grounds where you know that there are such behaviors that i think we can objectively stand back and say i don't you know i mean <laughs> take up, no two two th examples i'll give you right now mm -hmm. i don't that um, when it comes to child abuse, that you know, just because you have a visceral reaction to it, a feeling that that is absolutely wrong, and that you then need to go, hmm, where am I a child abuser in me? I mean, I think we have to differentiate between certain things. Animal cruelty is another one. You know, I mean, we there are certain defenseless people that are victims of behaviour that we can judge and just say that is not that is not behavior we condone that's not behavior that i'm just going to stand back and be neutral about you know i think that there are situations where we have to be incensed into defending and protecting people that are weaker and more vulnerable than us i just wanted to put that out there <laughs> i totally accept and appreciate that yes it's true and and i want to and i want to put another level on this because doing this work does require a certain calling us forward and calling us up in a certain way so Absolutely, when it comes to child abuse or domestic abuse or animal abuse, any other sort of abusive things, some of that reaction inside of us can be visceral because it can be something inside of us where we may be afraid that it could, we could do it or be a victim of ourselves. Or it can be from a place of like we are called to protect, which isn't necessarily as an angry gesture. It's more of a, a, a strength gesture. So I'm, 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 I'm going to delineate this more clearly. Because the thing is, sometimes we get so triggered by what's happening, we become immobilized. Mm -hmm. Or we become so visceral, we end up, you know, going ten times bigger than we need to to destroy the other person who is doing this abusive work. Versus, if we are not caught up in the projection side of things, we go, "That isn't working. I need to fix that." We step in from a much cleaner place. We can be much more protective, much more honourable, and respectful, but at the same time, stopping the behaviour. Yeah. You know, different approaches. I want to make sure this clear. No, absolutely, and 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 that's the other thing. It's such a fine line because often people that are abusive have suffered abuse themselves. So Indeed. rather than go into full throttled, you know, a hundred thousand percent their evil, disgusting need to be, you know, whatever, whatever, that we can have 
some understanding that often the, these outrageous behaviors um, are for some reason a reaction to what was done to them maybe as a small child or whatever. So therefore, yeah. that again, does not absolve them of the responsibility of being a kind, loving person that doesn't hurt another person or hurt mm -hmm. an animal or a defenseless animal or a child. So it, it, it is, you know, we have to just be, I think, a bit careful with the sort of coming across as a bit black and white with any yeah. time a visceral reaction, it's because, you know, you're, you're in denial about that in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's really important because there have been some, you know, again, we can be, we can witness a behavior that can trigger us because maybe again we've it's it's it, we've minimized what that experience was we've we've shut it down we haven't acknowledged it it's laying buried in us and maybe it's it's festering there so again you know it's we can these are all opportunities to look and go inside and say where is this pain coming from where is this reaction coming from yeah. why do I feel so strongly about this and why am I afraid to look at it. That's mm -hmm. the that's the big one. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And it goes again, negative projection or positive projection. You know, um, you know, Marion Williamson's famous, you know, we're, we're, we're more afraid of shining our light than we are of our darkness. We're, we're, we, and we, again, we touched on this. It's that, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, that tall poppy syndrome. You know, if you are taller and brighter than anyone else, you're going to get more attention and you're going to get, you know, attacked at times. I mean, people are can be quite vicious and cruel. And yeah. the more that you are visible, the more of a target you can become for people. But again, it's so interesting. I wanted to talk about this today because I did receive an email this morning. It was written to a group of us <laughs> by somebody that was um, projecting heavily. And it was really interesting to watch my reaction and to and to those of my of my siblings who also received the same email mm -hmm. and, um it was it was really interesting i mean i, I initially i i i felt oh i don't even want to read this because i can just tell from the from the subject line that it was going to be vitriolic which it was and it was such a case of projection it was it was almost it was so we couldn't even get upset about it because i just thought oh my god you've just You've just totally written about yourself, and you don't see it. I mean, it, this this person is is proven, you know, on paper to have to have been corrupt and having stolen and everything like this, and and yet their um, their what word would I even use? Um, blindness to how much of what they were saying was actually, as we always say, you know, the one finger pointing at you this fall back at yourself it right. just wow you've ticked that box yes you did that too wow you, you, it was it was so interesting and um rather than be upset and feel like defending myself i just thought it's so unnecessary it's so unnecessary. Yeah, yeah that is one of the powers of, of understanding how projections work because when you do understand what projections are about not so much for yourself but if somebody else then attacks you from some place because for most of us, and I was for a long time, defensive, ready to attack back and react and be in place of you know sort of self defense. When I when I now I know for self, when people start doing that to me, I am much more able, thankfully after all this work, and hopefully I'll get this one too, to just simply notice that in a second, that's not me, that's them. Mm -hmm. It's like I can step out of the way of the oncoming train and it goes straight past me. Yeah, which is so freeing and, and also a lot less painful. So it sounds like you did the same thing with letter, which is which is wonderful. Email, rather, it's email, email, excuse me, email, yeah. Yes, it, 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 I mean, I won't say those moments of like, hang on a minute, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> serious, you know. But uh, but again, as I said, it it was it was just boy, you can just put a bow on that one. It's like not worth engaging in, not worth the mm -hmm. response. It's so clearly coming from a very disturbed, dysfunctional place that. Um, I would say I had compassion or pity, or, or but I, but I understood what it was, and therefore really didn't warrant any response whatsoever. Right. Because with people like that too, that are that are so um, misguided, let's, let's put it that way, um, 
what is the, what's the point? You know, what yeah. is the point? It's like do yourself a favor and let it go at the beginning stage. It's and again, and this goes for anybody that's feeling on the receiving end of 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 a of a, an attack. You know, to really look at it and go, are there some elements of truth in here? Am I actually feeling? Am I triggered because there's elements of truth? Or am I triggered because of the absurdity or unfairness of the accusations? And again, it's like it's like it, these people are not. If if they're not self-aware enough not to hit send, then they're certainly not going to be self-aware enough to receive your response and say, "Oh, thank you." You know, I will look into projection. I'll I'll get back to you on where I see myself in what I've written. They're not going to do that. So save yourself the bother. That, that's the thing is that it's it can and this is where the the challenge is where you start to take this idea and how you look at the other person projecting and you, there's a temptation to be like holy than now like su- like superior to them like it's like i can see you're projecting it's not me yeah mm-hmm. what you said though it's important is that yes you may realize it's not about you however is there anything in it that you can use for your own transformation and development which is really the conscious choice because most people are going to go i'm fine i'm fine it's about them it's not about me it's like no don't take don't be don't be because then you're buying in the same game again Mm -hmm. it's like you just look at what's happening witness what's happening and witness versus react to and then choose to see what you can do with it in terms of like okay so i'm noticing that how does it help me how can i benefit from this how can i work with this myself Mm -hmm. that's where the work is and so what you said is perfect because it really shows people that this isn't about being immune or being um, superior or you know, holier than thou. It's about how do you stand clear, notice what's happening without taking it personally, and then see what you can use for yourself. Yeah, and you know what else you just said, which is really great, and I think this is the the, the what goes on under this is that um, the um, better than less than. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. when, when we get into that, I'm better than they're less than that's when the the judgment comes in that's when the denial of certain aspects of ourselves happens where yeah. only good people do this and this and this and bad <laughs> people do this and this and this so therefore oh, yeah. it can't be bad so i can't own any of those traits and that's what's so amazing and wonderful about um you know embracing everything about what it is to be human own like I, i'm the first to say yeah i can be bitchy <laughs> you know i've got bitchy stuff. it doesn't come out that often it's you know more of the loving side but yeah does it come out every now and again yes and all the other traits that we decide about whereas i, I use the word bitchy because that used to be a control thing for me in a previous relationship because i was such the good girl and the you know that when i was accused of being a bitch it was because it was it was like it was really hurtful for me it's like i'm not a bitch i don't do anything bitchy i'm you know i'm the nicest person on earth and and you're accusing me of being that and and it was only by me owning yeah i can be bitchy that it didn't sting anymore and it mm-hmm. couldn't control me it there you go. that's the thing the control if we yeah. don't embrace all of you know like this email this morning would i have could I have sent an email like that if I felt wronged or whatever? Absolutely. That's in mm-hmm. my capacity to do that, to blame and blame and blame and project. Um, thankfully, I don't. <laughs> but, but I'm saying <laughs> I can own that, it's, that I could be like that 100%. Um, so, yeah, I love what you say because it really is. It's the, it's the judgment that I'm better than you, so therefore I don't do this. Or I'm less than you and I don't do this. Like. You know, I my one of my um I was I went to art school when I was sixteen. I was an artist, but I could never own it. I could never and again it was just <laughs> probably a projection, but it was a teacher that said to me back then, he said, Um, you're not an artist, you're an imitator of life. Because mm-hmm. I can actually I'm I I have that it is a gift, I can capture reality very easily. I can paint your portrait in a second and it's going to, everybody knows who, who it would be Barry. But, but I was told at 16 that it wasn't art. It was, it was copying life. And I held on to that. And I had that judgment against myself that I wasn't a real artist. So therefore I projected my 
belief that I wasn't a real artist onto other artists. Everybody, you know, artists were, it's, oh my God, you're an artist. <laughs> because I wouldn't own it in myself. Yeah. And the, the thing about, I think I love that because it's such a reminder to us that we, well, first of all, is that especially when we're younger, we do tend to take other people's word as being more important than our own truth, which is where a lot of our art work as an adult is to heal those beliefs and change the perception so we actually own those qualities we have inside ourselves. The other piece that I want to just tie into, and something you said a bit earlier in this piece, is that what we're talking about here is becoming more masterful, hence relationship mastery, in the way we deal with things, not to be aloof or be above everything, saying, I'm so good at this, I've healed everything, there's nothing going to trigger anything else. It's more about how do you work with stuff when it gets triggered, because then it becomes a toolkit that you use every day or every week, every month, rather than I'm done with everything, I can coast the rest of my life. So with projections, positive and negative, this discussion is something that becomes, because I'm, I'm saying it for myself, I've been, I've been this path of this journey and doing this work for 40 odd years or so. I ain't perfect. Let's <laughs> not make mistakes. And I'm still using the tools. And the good thing is, is that I get quicker at using the tools and frankly, more um, gentle with myself when I don't use the tools. Because the challenge is, this is stuff we use all the time, but it's not like an instant fix that we always get it done. Right, we make mistakes. And so being being gentle with ourselves at the same time. So when we look at this, like, oh yeah, let me fix that. Let me change that. Let me course correct. Where we can change our path is such a... A gift that hum I mean, Frank, it's very humbling, but also it's very empowering because we know that we have the tools to get through life in a better way, in a more graceful way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was, I was thinking, I think it needs to be confession time, Barry. I think we need to confess to some of <laughs> our objections. I mean, as you were talking, I'm thinking back to some of the ones. I had such shame as a child around being needy because my mother was just too damn busy. She was a single parent. She had seven children. She um, and she, she opened up a home to a home for um, mentally vulnerable, disabled people, and and she had a lot to deal with. So the last thing she needed was a needy child. So right. that was one of her things was to to shame me into um, never needing her was to say you're too needy. So that was something I carried through life, and to the point where you know. <laughs> I preferred cats to dogs because cats weren't needy and, right. and dogs were too needy. And I really, I had such an aversion to needy. And the irony was I was needy, a normal level of neediness, whether I acknowledged it or not. Right. But, but because I was so ashamed of it, I became hyper independent and, and to prove to the world that I wasn't needy. It was so funny. So, um, but now I am thankfully, I'm a dog owner. My dog's neediness does not repel me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's how healthy I got. So come on, Barry, share, share one of yours with me. Um, I was just thinking back, because going, going back way when I was younger, there was definitely a part of me that felt like I couldn't shine. It was safer to stay in the, in the pack, like stay in the middle somewhere. And it's funny because in, in junior school in England, which is basically, I guess, I don't know where that's, um, it's basically like six to thirteen, six to twelve, something like that age they range. Middle school. Say again. They call it middle school. I think it is here. Okay, middle school. Yeah. So when I went to middle school, right at the beginning, I excelled in my class. In fact, in Nick's in England back then, we had grade levels. There were four levels within the year of the class. So there were four classes in each year, and there's a bottom class and the top class, sort of thing in the range. I was in the second level class, just the way it was assigned, because there's no assi no grade before that. And I excelled, and I was one of the top three at the end of that year. So the next year, I moved up to the top class, and then I panicked. You know, I mean, I'm <laughs> seven years old, seven years old, I didn't know. But what I felt like I couldn't get to the top of that class, I sort of had to muddle in the middle somewhere. And so for me, one of my safety mechanisms was is don't stand out. Don't be visible, because if I am, people will see me, and that might be bad. And I come, and I come from a family where none of us stood out, and the family was always, always sort of fitting in sort of thing. And nowadays, because of having written my book and doing podcasts like this with you, and other places I've been, I am much more comfortable being seen. And because the part of me inside that was afraid of that is no longer controlling the ship. And it also, I recognize that I don't do it for my ego. I do it because I have something to give and serve and make a difference with. So that lesson was a big one to go through for me. Wonderful. Lovely one. I'm glad you did, because you're here today. Thank you. <laughs> being, being seen. 
along with me. So that's great. Um, well, I hope that hope that made sense to people. That a couple, as I said, a couple of people asked us to go into the um, into what projection was because we touched mm -hmm. on it before. And um, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. So, if anybody listening to this or watching this has any questions, there should be a link somewhere around where this shows up. We can send a message to us or reach out to us. If you're not sure how to work with it, just reach out. We can give you some more information, more guidance. Sounds great. Okay. Well, have a wonderful week, everybody, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. We trust you enjoyed this episode and invite you to share this with your friends and loved ones. In fact, please subscribe to our Relationship Mastery podcast. That way you'll get each new episode fresh and shiny as soon as it is released. We'd love to hear from you as well. So go ahead and enter your questions and comments at relationshipmastery.show. Take good care. We will connect with you in our next episode of Relationship Mastery.